I told you, we coming back. I'm Marcus, Minister Marcus Hoggard, servant evangelist. Some call me pastor, some call me friend, just don't call me late. Cause love is always on time. Love isn't always on time, but this love is. And this love in me said it's time for part three of coffee hour. This is the three part segment. We're doing something a little bit different. I'm Marcus, that's Clark. I'm Marcus. That's Clark. <laughs> Clark. Yeah. Tell the folks about what we meant by you were on that first step. But before you do that, let's just do what we do. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, Father. We just pray for your presence. By the way, the Lord's reminding me, yes, even in prayer, because that's communication. Clark's driving. I'm not driving. <laughs> I'm still standing. Yeah, yeah. Even when I'm not driving, I'm standing on the rock. Ooh, because I don't always have to be in control. <laughs> but Father, we thank you so much for your comedy. We thank you for, so much for your personality. But more importantly, we thank you so much for your presence. For your presence and your power is made perfect in my weakness. And your presence is heaven to me. And I know to him too. So let your presence be felt here. We're two or more gathered here in the midst of the, And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, I do pray like that. My hands and giving to things. Because that's not like, Oh, our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Head down. No one can look. Gotta keep my eyes closed. No. That's not a form to prayer. In fact, God speaks the opposite. What does God say how prayer should be, Clark? Before we get into this. Let's give a little nugget. It's and, nugget time. Like McDonald's. But this is for free. Uh, when you're talking to Dad, it should be sincere, simple, and from the heart. Glory to God. Spirit and truth. Amen. Amen. There it is. So look, when we get you, Mike Clark, get on the mic. Okay. And uh, basically what we're talking about we, we're, is a three-part segue, just being spirit-led and what that looks like. And the big topic is religion versus Holy Spirit. And can you see the difference? We're trying to let you get a visual to it. So follow us as we follow Christ. Hashtag everywhere we go. Ministries, get at us. Hashtag Church of Philadelphia. Hashtag Ooh, dream team, hashtag ride the wave, hashtag team Yeshua. We, we got a lot of hashtags. He gives me new ones every day. <laughs> Give the plug. The plug. <laughs> He's the source. All right, so uh, we were getting ready to talk about, and the segue was step one. Clark was in step one when I met Clark, a uh, young, wild out, you know, just spirit led individual. Didn't grow up in church. That was me. I met the church, Clark. And uh, I'll let you let you know, let him let you you know, know what we're talking about. So I'm gonna put this down. I'm gonna ask him some questions. He's driving, but we got new equipment today. So focus on the word, on the road, in the word, Clark. So Clark, let the people know. Basically, um, tell them what that first step looked like, and when we met, how it changed, and uh, what the difference that you've seen from religion to true Holy Spirit baptism relationship. Well, I'd always grown up around in Christianity and always called myself a Christian. Right. But I was in the Air Force May of 96, had this emptiness hit me, surrendered my life. You know this is spontaneous. <laughs> No professional. We want to give you. Here. We want to give you a background. Give a, a quiet set. The quiet storm. Yeah. So I uh, went to that emptiness and surrendered my life, and I got the presence of God, but not the power. What's that mean? What's that mean? Now, looking back in, in, into now, what does that mean? It means I knew something was different because I never had that emptiness again. I knew there was this new love inside of me for God. Mm -hmm. And this is what, what year was this? May of 96. Okay, so for how many years from 96 till, you know, whatever, how many years did you walk with God thinking that the way you knew God was the way? Tell me, yeah. elaborate on that. Yeah, uh, I never stuck with one particular Oh, church. by the way, this is a Christian driving session. This is Christians driving with coffee and Jesus. Yeah, Hollywood could do, we could do it better. What they can do, we could do better. Right. So, <laughs> May of 96, 
surrendered, the peace came in, and I wanted to share my faith. I went for 20 years, and I did have some measured growth, but it wasn't a fire, it wasn't a zeal. But was, how did you know that you were missing that fire and zeal? I didn't, because what I had was normal to me. And I had people in the church system looking at me because of my head knowledge. Talk about that head knowledge and how the head knowledge got perceived as Holy Spirit baptism. Well, I love to learn. I love to study. I took those traits into the faith, and people would look at me and they'd say, wow, this guy knows a lot. But there's a difference between head knowledge and heart knowledge. And so a lot of what, the gym, by the way. A lot of what I was doing was, I mean, it was biblical in the sense of the letter of the law, but it was not spirit-led. That's what was missing. So how did you feel during that time? You were getting headaches, right? You were getting headaches. Uh, tell the people what was going on in your life yeah. without deliverance, true deliverance. Living a saved life, not a delivered life. No. The uh, heart wanted to follow God, but I wasn't doing it in the Holy Spirit. So I was hitting all this warfare and responsibility that just piles up more and more burdens in the heart. They were there even focus before. On camera, focus on the road. That's why that's even there. before I became a believer. So all that pain just keeps piling up in the heart and it led into a major depression, rage, PTSD, and I carried it for so long, I thought it was the norm. I didn't think there was anything different. This is how it is. And I held on with a glimmer of hope that it would change. But nothing really changed. Okay. So what did you, what happened in your life that says, okay, I need a change? Let's pull over right here. So you people said you can get focused. We're just trying something new. We are safe. We're in a parking lot. We just got this new um, steady cam. So just uh, we're just trying something new. We're practicing. Practice makes perfect. But anyhow, so tell people what that looks like. Tell people what, what, and why you, you you knew you needed change. What happened in your life that says, I don't have everything that God has for us, for me, for people. What happened to that religious Clark and turned him into a spirit-filled Clark? What changed? Well, the biggest change came from meeting Marcus, the anointing on him. There was vision to see through the heart and to see all this junk inside of me. And through that, hearing things like I have a pride problem. I went through the church system hearing all these sermons about pride, pride, pride. And up here, I said, yeah, yeah, we got a flesh nature. Yeah, yeah, I'm repentant which to a small degree I was, but nowhere close to what the Father needed, desired for me for my benefit. What's the scripture when he uses, I'm going to use the foolishness of the world to shame? What's that scripture? You know scripture as well. Mm -hmm. uh, he came to use the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. So me not growing up in church, how, how, did, how did that, tell people about that for a few minutes. Well, and how, so you can elaborate what they meant by meeting Marcus. What, what is that dynamic? Because mm -hmm. really, I, I did not knowing it, I wasn't like the church at all. I didn't grow up nowhere around the church. So look at the contrast. I've told people that contrast and, um, you know, versus, you know, the verse. Mm -hmm. You know, the contrast versus um, religion and um, just being free in Christ, led. Well, for Marcus, uh, like you said, he didn't have all the head knowledge. He simply, he had this passion, this zeal, and this fire in his heart. And the Spirit would give him verses and messages out of nowhere, which stunned me. I wasn't used to that. That's not normal in the church atmospheres I've been in. I know it can happen sparsely, but for me, it was mostly head knowledge and a robotic walk. There was love, but how it came out was rigid and robotic. And he's, Meeting Marcus Tell me about that robot. Would well, you mean like us going out and then me ordering a beer? Talk about that, like that first time that happened. That, so people let people know what they mean by robot. Not that just alcohol, you know, drinking alcohol or not drinking alcohol makes you legalistic. 
but talk to you know give the people an idea I like to elaborate to the people mm -hmm. well for me uh, I never drank alcohol I didn't go out to bars why tell them why though because to me it was uh, an unhealthy atmosphere to be in maybe on occasion a sports bar but very rare and I wouldn't drink alcohol tell them why what kind of household did you grow up in the home I grew up in pretty much chaotic but religious mask. I don't doubt there was some love for the Lord, but there was so much confusion. Control. And control and rules that it just, it didn't come out or it came out broken. And when I came into the faith, I was the same way. Mm. And then when I met him, he was the total opposite. He was driven by his heart with very little head knowledge. And the stuff he got would line up because you're supposed to test the spirits whether it's from the head or the heart you're supposed to test the spirit behind it and he, he would get this stuff and I'm like how is this possible you know how can he know that about my heart and some of it pressed my heart like telling me I got pride or I got to let go of a dream that I was holding on to that was dead and should have never been there all kinds of burdens and the spirit of God opened me up through this relationship through this ministry basically uh, balancing each other out because now that I'm learning how to be spirit led and not just head led God uses that same head knowledge but for an anointed purpose so how long did it, did you fight with letting go of rapture theories and once they always saved how long did you fight with God working through me how long did you fight with the fact that you needed to get down with God and do some more work? And let the people know when the deliverance came, when you started surrendering and letting go. Because uh, that's what happens with people with head knowledge. Would you agree? If you get a stubbornness to what you know, a pride. Mm -hmm. And then you send someone like me walking with the Lord five, six months, and his word is true. You had a decision to make. But tell people about, real quickly, and then tell them about like what we experienced today, which, which would never would have happened in your life, about just the order with the phone call with Regina to the word we got before we called Regina. Just put all that together as we wrap them up. Oh, by the way, it's plug time. This is just testimony time. This is just uh, what we do. We're led. This is random. God says pull over. We pull over. And um, we just try to piggyback everything that happened through the day. Thank you for following us and bearing with us. And uh, back to sweat. Back to the message. Head knowledge is a prison. Being reminded that knowledge puffeth up, but only love edifies. Just as I would have never walked into any kind of bar on my own, I would have not walked into a higher level of the faith, receiving uh, dreams and visions. Did you get those in them 20 years? Nope. How many visions for about a year and a half you've been fully surrendered? How many visions have you gotten in the past year and a half compared to the first 20 years? I can't even write them all down. There's so many. Right now. Right now. How many did you get in your first 20 years before the Lord introduced each other, us to each other? And you truly met him? Yeah, maybe a handful. I can only think of one. 2 Corinthians 11, 14. Satan himself poses as an angel of light. And that's how he seduces people with their head knowledge to get stuck in his prison of pride. I've been in it for a long time. And that's why this message is coming to all of you that have that religious facade, whether you know it or not. Yeshua and intimacy is the only way to go, but you can't have a relationship with him without humbling that pride do you think, first. Do you think that, uh, what's your Joel scripture? I think Joel 2 about the outpour of the Spirit. Can you quote that for us? Yeah. In the latter days, I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Young men will see visions. Old men will dream dreams. Do you think that you encountered that the past 18 months? I did. How about the first 20? Did you live that, that life? Nowhere close. How about 1 Corinthians 4.20, for the kingdom of heaven consists of power, not words. Was that real to you? What did power look like to you for the first 20 years of your religious walk? Some uh, fruit of the spirit and some spiritual gifts I enjoyed, like teaching. But again, a lot of it was carnal or spiritual knowledge, but it wasn't driven by the heart, by the spirit. Talk about now. Talk about, give the people an example today that led to this video. Give him the example. I'll try, I'll try not to chime in as much because I'm hopefully uh, the Spirit of God will recall the important points, and I believe He will. Amen. Mm -hmm. um, the day started off. We prayed. 
and we were led to go to River City Cafe, um, which we then begin to say our prayers and do our thing, and um, just talk about from that moment on, kind of like how God just worked when we got into the car and then the phone call to Regina. Just give the people that idea, and then you know bring it, bring it, do what you do. One of the ways we hear from the Father is to be patient, be still, pray, drive around, and wait for the Spirit to impress ideas, direction on us. And we were led to River City Cafe. We spent some time there, enjoyed the meal, lifted up Hebrew prayers. As we were leaving, uh, it was led to uh, led to lift up. You know, are we going to the boardwalk? And that was a good place. We do prayer walks out there, but don't always know the timing. But let's put on Marcus Hart. Let's, let's call Regina, see what she has to say about it. So call her up, pray for her, let her pray for us, tell her what's going on, but not the details. We did not reveal where we were headed. We did not reveal what we were doing. And the doing. purpose of calling Regina wasn't to have her join in prayer. It was really to get a hold of Nate, her son, get him down to the beach and the Lord's been pressing on my heart to start praying with Regina again and, and um, you know because there's times and seasons for everybody and everything and even people in your life so we've been more focused on discipling her son Nate and um, she does some ministry work with us and um, but yeah so through that I was being led to start praying with Regina so the Lord said pray with her now and then that's when she showed she didn't even know we weren't even asking her to pray about what we were doing. So I don't want people to be confused, or neither do you. Or you be confused. So the purpose of calling Regina was not even to get agreement in prayer, it was just to check on Nate, and then God took over. And when uh, the Spirit put it on Regina's heart, she started praying in tongues. She received the message and vision of us going to the boardwalk and meeting boy and a girl dressed in goth and uh, it's just there's no explanation for that so she didn't have that head so, knowledge so reminded people so we prayed and what we thought we got our word about going to the boardwalk because we were getting ready to go to garden city which is the complete opposite way of myrtle beach boardwalk and then five minutes later we call while in prayer i prayed and asked was led to have regina close us out so she received a vision, which lines up with the Joel 2, correct? Mm -hmm. Joel 2 through 3. And it was just astounding. Tell the people how that never would have happened in your life for the first 20 years. And then let's get this thing wrapped up. Thanks a lot, Carl, for sharing. Well, again, human logic cannot follow the Spirit. The Spirit of God is foolishness to those who are perishing. The Spirit of God is foolishness to our eyes and our ears and what we think and how we structure our day and our schedules. And that is the big thing I struggle with and I'm breaking free from is the routine. The routine of religion. And through this uh, new level of intimacy with the Father, He's breaking me out of that religious routine in order to open up the heart more for His Spirit to speak to me more, guide me more because there's so much more God is infinite, and uh, I keep being reminded of John 20, uh, when Yeshua rose from the dead, he breathed on the disciples and said, receive you the Holy Spirit, and that's true, they did at that point receive the Holy Spirit, but it wasn't until Acts chapter 1, technically 2, that they received the power of the Spirit, so they had the Holy Spirit, they had the relationship but the power didn't show up till Pentecost in Acts 2. How's that relate to your life? And in my life, that's what I'm going through now. I had the presence. I had the start of a relationship. But that power for daily living, flowing at this level, for the dreams, for the visions, for the humility to hear and wait, that is what's new. There it is. There it is. You heard it. You heard it live. Full effect. God is good. Just shout out to the kingdom of heaven for all that he does in our lives and through us. So that's a little nugget from me and Clark, and that was a little bit of his testimony. Listen, 
get out of religion, get into God. Are you born again? That's the message. God bless you. Shalom. Disciples cross. We out. See ya.